Now, when we had the blizzard here in 2015, the first bad snow, uh, my father's snowboard broke down. And because I have elderly parents, I created a, a moat around the house for safety. So if we have to get out of the basement, I don't care what house, side of the house is on fire, we can escape one way or the other. I had to do the whole thing by hand. It's like 100 feet, four foot wide, because I had to get a wheelchair through. So after working for six hours, don't get me wrong, my mom sits there and says like, you know, you must be really uh, in a lot of pain. I said, no, not at all, I, I'm fine. But I would like a, a cup of hot chocolate. I recently saw a TV show where they had a doctor on asking him as to the kinds of injuries he was seeing this year in light of the heavy blizzards we had in the year 2015. Uh, and the obvious ones were a lot of back spasms, back sprains, and also heart attacks. And that's because people are using straight shovels, also a lot of them aren't necessarily in shape and keeping up with their exercise programs. They're more like weekend warriors when they're trying to get out there and shovel snow once or twice uh, a year. Not a good idea. So for all of those folks, even those who are athletic, I'm going to show you a different process that's going to spare your back and more likely reduce the risk of heart attack. Because when you're doing this method, you're not going to constrict your chest as you do when you bend over to lift with a straight shovel. So basically this is going to take a, a little bit longer when you shovel because it takes more time. But again, it's worth the safety. So, you need to get a shovel that's uh, designed like this. All right, this little quick here makes a difference in dropping the head down lower to the ground. I've seen the kind that are curved, and I can't speak to those. I've never tried one. But when I look at the design, I don't think the design is as effective as this particular design for this particular method I'm going to show you. So basically, it's just a case of rocking back and forth. We know that we're supposed to use our legs to lift heavy objects, but how do you do that when you have a straight shovel it forces you to bend over low to get to the snow. So with this particular design, just basically take a nice wide stance, grab the shovel down by the crook, but don't bend over to do it. Bend your knees. So now, if I just rock back and forth, slide my leg, uh, slide to my front knee, I'm gonna pick up the snow here. Now notice that when I don't change my hand grip and just rock back to my back leg, the shovel comes up, not because I lifted it, but because of the structure of my skeleton, I'm lower here. When I come back, I'm higher here in this back leg, even though my knee is bent. It's not bent as much as the front knee, and you can control that. So you shift forward, get the snow, rock back, then rock forward again, and discharge the snow. So it's just a rocking motion like this. So rock, back, discharge. Get the snow, rock back, discharge. Get the snow, rock back, discharge. Now, since I'm throwing the snow over the edge of the driveway, facing the grass, I'm going to uh, walk down the driveway. Because my left leg's forward, I'm going to shift to my left. So you want to do this. Rock, back, discharge, step. Rock, back, discharge. Two steps. Step left, step right, discharge. Step left, step right, discharge. Step left, step right, discharge. So once you get that rhythm, you'll, uh, you'll get through the snow a lot easier. Uh, again, not faster, but a lot easier. If you're working on a porch, some people ask me, like, well, geez, I have a rail, and I have to get up over that. Still not a problem. Don't change the pattern. Because once you get the inertia behind you, you can throw the snow as high as you want. It doesn't matter. And of course, you have some scenarios where maybe it's six inches, overnight. Most of this is like, you know, one, two, three inches or whatever. But if you have a high pile, don't change the pattern. You're just going to have to start at the top of the snow, right? Bring it back, discharge, go in a little shower, discharge. Rock back, discharge. So whether you're going over a rail or if you're starting high and working low, it's the same pattern. Right, get the snow, rock back, discharge, take a step, another step, rock back, two steps, left, right, and go. So that's me going this way. If I'm going down the length of the driveway, then what I want to do, same pattern, except instead of stepping sideways, you're going to step in the direction that you're headed. So if I was coming this direction with the snow off to my left, I'm going to get the snow, rock back, discharge the left, step forward. 
So I'm going to take two steps. Step with the left foot, slide the right foot, rock back, discharge. Step, rock back, discharge. Step, rock back, discharge. Now you always want to throw the snow in the direction of whatever leg is leading. So if I'm leading with my left leg, I want to throw the snow to my left. You do not want to throw the snow that way because now you're using your back to do it, putting a lot of torque on your vertebrae. So make sure that if you're going to have snow on that side, you either switch your grip and same pattern. Get snow, rock back, discharge, step, rock back, discharge, or just change the direction. Prefer to throw it over to your left all the time. Go on the other side. Thanks for watching.